one becomes very clear on who one serves and what the nature of one's relationship is with the other competing stakeholders, it becomes easier to get that North Star sense of doing the right thing. Am I doing the right thing for the next generation of leaders? In the world, in the companies, we tend to have minor challenges or we're facing reality of severe challenges. What are some of the qualities that are really important when there are devastating challenges or, you know, in a company, it might be profitability, you know, we might have to close down, we can't find employees. What are some of the strengths that leaders need to incorporate when there is severe challenge, because it's easy to get into that fear mode and operate from the fear mode, which is more rules, more challenges, more power, um, you know, more control. But there is that opposite, which is then most important. Can you speak a little bit to that? So, yeah, I think it's about a person having a, um, a mindset of an element of the infinite, that anything is possible that there is not a, a limited pie that has to be that has to be shared out we're living in in a world in a universe that is capable of of enormous production believing in people that we that people can turn themselves around and people can turn a business around being willing to to face discomfort and and pain uh, i think if we're trying to so as you talked earlier about pleasing people and we're always going to try and find the easy way for ourselves or for others, we're going to miss the opportunities to to grow. So to accept and embrace the struggles of growth and to be able to take a, a bigger picture and have a, a North Star ability to say, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing in terms of my values and my beliefs? We're living in a very noisy world and the noise is coming at us from all directions and all sorts of different platforms is coming to us in the form of people who are very confident that they have the answer to everything and they have the, the, the right view of everything. And we have to be able to check in with ourselves. What is my belief system? And, and am I doing the right thing? Being able to take a, a, a sometimes a, to zoom out a little bit and say, not only am I doing the right thing in this narrow area, but am I doing the right thing in a bigger area? Uh, and to realize that stakeholders have opposite interests very often. It's very, very difficult for a business leader. It's okay when things are good and, and I can pay good dividends to my investors and I can increase salaries for my employees and I can increase prices to customers and nobody cares because there's plenty of money around. And we've come from that environment where money has been very abundant and cheap. And leaders who grew up in that environment are finding it very hard to adjust to an environment where money is expensive and where you have to make trade-offs. And that's where the leadership decisions have to be made. I've got to make a trade-off. I'm either going to pay the employees more or I'm going to be able to deliver returns to the investors. I can't do both. Which is the right thing for me to do? And right means morally and ethically right and right from a business perspective as well. And being able to to navigate the complexity of, of rightness. I think today altogether we're talking about some of the, the political battles that are taking place today. I think It's much easier if we just ask ourselves, not am I conservative or liberal, or do I favor the Palestinians or the Israelis, or uh, am I pro-Russia or or, or pro-Ukraine? That gets very complicated. The first thing to, to clarify with oneself is, do I know the difference between right and wrong? Do I know the difference between good and bad? And am I willing to take a side for good? And that means there are times when I might be on one person's side and there are times when that person does something terribly wrong and I will not be on their side for that. It's not an alliance. It's a, it's a moral choice that needs to be made in the way we judge the actions of, of others. It's only our family that we love unconditionally. And even there, there come times where it's not unconditioned, where, where a person might do something that shatters the love. And certainly when it comes to the world and to a business with stakeholders, am I willing to do that which is right no matter how uncomfortable it is? 
or do I want to just find the most comfortable path and wing my way through? I think those are the people who are finding it hardest. The people who have moral clarity are finding it easier to, to navigate complexity and confusion because we're dealing with complexity and confusion and there's no black and white answer out there. It has to be black and white for me and, and that might be different for you and that's okay. Uh, as long as I know that, that you're honest and integrous to who you are and me to who I am, we can then have a conversation about it and understand that we see the world differently. It, it's when we don't know the difference between right and wrong and good and bad that we get into really shady areas. That high integrity to self and accepting the integrity, whatever that might be for the other person, that's again a navigation and communication. And I have a, while you were sharing, there is a story that I have in mind. It's when I had visited India and there was a company that builds portable homes or buildings. And they had tons of people working for them. There were about 5,000 employees. And there was manual things that were happening. You know, they were carrying things from one area to another manually. And of course, the suggestion was, why wouldn't you innovate? You know, you, we have equipment uh, movers, you know, like we have other means to do this work. And they said, we choose this because we have tons of people that live in this world. And it's our moral responsibility to offer employment. And should we bring machinery, these folks will not have the means to feed their family. And it is our social responsibility, not only to make profit, but to take care of the communities around us. They knew what their purpose was. Definitely, they made money. They took care of their people. So there is an opportunity to and both. And yes. not saying that every company needs to go out there and not, inno not to innovate. However, you're speaking about this balance that we have to remember in order to not just be a leader of a company, but the communities around us. And I think if we all do that, I can, and you spoke about it, we can definitely innovate. We can change the systems that are not working rather than to stay within them. Like school systems is one of the areas that I'm speaking of currently is when you have the board, you have the teachers and you have the administration and the administrators often pulled in the directions of the state's changes on what the curriculums are, but we're forgetting who are this changes for? What is the bottom line? Who are we serving? Who's our customer? It's the child, the student. So what is the best for us to do for them? And I think if we just sort of align to the purpose and how could we could innovate the way we do things, we can really, and, and this conversation was very inspiring for me, um, in the last minutes, what are some of the things that you can share with those who are leading and they have boards and they have, they're in the middle? And definitely sometimes these leaders are reporting to the board and they still have the employees and constantly the ship's how can the leader lead with their integrity and maintain the expectations of the board, but really meet the needs of their people? I think you, you touched on, on, on a word, and that, that really is the foundation of purpose, and that is for each person to decide, who am I serving? We're all serving someone in every area of our lives or something. And to clarify that, to get very, very absolutely crystal clear on, on who I'm serving, so, for example, in a business, I'm serving the customer, let us say. I, I make that choice. I'm here to serve the customer. I'm here to support employees. Now, you might have another business that says, I'm here to serve my employees. And, and customers are the vehicle. By having customers, we make enough money to be able to pay the employees. But that's a decision I have to make as a leader. Am I here to serve employees and customers are a vehicle? Or am I here to serve customers and I support my employees in that activity? And when it comes to shareholders, I don't serve my shareholders. I reward my shareholders. They've taken a chance on me. I reward them. So we have these different relationships. We get confused when we think, I serve all of them. How do I serve all of them? What, how do I do that? No, I serve one of them. It's my choice as to who it is that I want to serve. We all serve somebody. Some of us serve ourselves. Uh, we become self-serving. need to acknowledge that. I'm here to serve myself. I, I'm first in this. Then just acknowledge that. Just clarity on, on who I'm here to serve. So in the, in the school system that you're talking about too, where it's a, it can be such a struggle, there should be no question, I'm here to serve 
the next generation of leaders. That's who I'm here to serve. Not even the students in front of me. I'm here to serve the next generation. How well am I doing that? I report to a board. That's not the same as serving a board. I do, I do not serve you. I have to be able to get up and say to the board, I do not serve you. I report to you. These are the people I serve. To be able to say to the parents of, 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 the, of the students sometimes, I don't serve you. I need your support, and I, I can help you and support you in many different ways. But my, my service is to the next generation of, of leaders, to the next generation of, of, of people. That's, that's where I'm going to make the difference. Uh, so I think if, the, if one becomes very clear on who one serves and what the nature of one's relationship is with the other competing stakeholders, it becomes easier to get that North Star sense of doing the right thing. Am I doing the right thing for the next generation of leaders? Thank you, David, for speaking with us today. You're listening to Jagged Edge Podcast with Yogi Patel. If you like the content of this podcast, please follow and join us for another session. And David, thank you for encouraging us, inspiring us as leaders, as human beings, and your wisdom. I hope to speak to you again and have different conversations. I look forward to that. Thank you very much for having me, Yogi. If you like the content of this video, please don't forget to follow. And also, if you want more information, visit the website, yogi.com. Patel, ttte.com.